of the time when they try to defend the low ground and do not succeed in doing so, they are um, not going to have a bunker on the high ground. So it made perfect sense that Hawk wants to try to make something happen. But Alive being a great Terran, kind of like we saw Tasia last week, mm -hmm. knows when he can hold the low ground and knows when he doesn't. Immediately lifted up and got bunkers on the high ground. That was very high level play by Alive. But later on, still got a little bit too over eager, man. Or just not patient enough. Yeah, and uh, Huck was able to capitalize on that, putting him in position to go up to 4-1 in the league. If he wins this game, he will win yeah, the match. That's a really great start for Huck, man. That's uh, almost guaranteed a spot in the playoffs slash wild cards. And of course, from there on, anything is still possible. It's always nice to win your group, guys, because not only do you make a lot of money from all your wins in the regular season, you also uh, put yourself in a, in a better position for the online playoffs, which makes it more likely that you're going to make it to the offline finals. We have a pretty complicated system in the NASL. I do understand it, but it took me a little while, man. <laughs> it's kind of like taking a, a summer course, you know, a few weeks, <laughs> and then you get it. Actually, guys, it all makes sense, and it's a it's a pretty intelligent system. I kind of like it. It's yeah. a little bit confusing maybe for the people at home and for the players, but we have wild cards, we have playoffs, and we have offline finals. Play all season, uh, earn them points, and uh, a long story short, the guys that do the best go straight to the playoffs, the guys that do okay, Go into the wild cards. Wild card is basically just one round before the playoffs. And everybody else gets to pack it up, go home early. If yep. you do really badly, you're out of the league. Exactly. Some people, they will just, it will just be the end of the season after the regular league. Some people will drop out of the league. And some people will go into the wild cards. And some people will skip the wild cards and go immediately into the playoffs. Um, I think that makes some sense. EG's Hawk is, of course, our Canadian blue proto spawning in the right top side. I'm a little bit sad. Uh, well, EG is blue. But I feel like red is much more Canada. You know? Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a very, uh, it's a very fair point. One of my favorite little uh, internet graphics that I've ever seen when it was up on Reddit a couple of times is the uh, Canadian Captain, or uh, Captain Canada, I guess. Somebody photoshopping Captain America to be all in red and white and to have the Canadian uh, maple leaf on his shield. Mm -hmm. thought it was really cool. He looked badass, man. He did. If they would make a movie about him, would you watch it? Well, here's the thing. Uh, it probably wouldn't be that exciting because Canadians never get mad. They're not violent and they're pretty pacifistic. Okay. So, uh, I mean, Canadians are so nice, man. It would be a movie about like sharing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's, it's like Robin Hood, but then there is no bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody robs the bank. Captain Canada shows up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> SCB guys does get picked off. Our life. Um, I mean, uh, Huck doesn't know yet, Ben, that Alive actually has a refinery. Huck's going to go for the one gate fast expand, while Alive might just go for a 1-1 one -one over here. But this Zealot gets a pretty good scouting, uh, some pretty good scouting information done. He's going to kill the SCP. More importantly, he's going to see there is no command center. So, uh-uh, you ain't tricking me today, bad boy. You naughty Alive. And the best thing is, Ben, this bunker is not up yet, but uh, this stalker still has to get on the low ground. Oh, ah. he's going to have to back up. Taking a lot of damage yeah. there. If there were only two Marines, this Stalker could have done great things over here because he could have run to the right side and then shoot on the Marines. Well, by the time he would be here, only one Marine would be remaining. But against three Marines, that would have been suicide also. Good call by Hawk not to commit to that. And uh, so has he seen enough? Is he sure yeah. that there's no command center? He is, uh, unless it's on the high ground. But yeah. unless you're a cloud and you build a high ground, a uh, command center on the high ground and a bunker on the low ground, there's no reason to do that. Well, either way, it is going to be a Banshee opening here out of Alive. But it's pretty quick, ro but it's quick Robo by Hux. So, so far, everything is good, man. This is one gate robotics facility. Now he's going to get the two additional gates. This is all perfect. Now, it's still going to be hard not to take any worker losses, guys. Banshees are mobile. They're quick. They have, uh, they have high DPS. So it's very likely that Alive still picks up a few worker kills. But as long as Hux doesn't lose more than, well, four, maximum five, he should be in pretty good shape uh, to stop the most likely upcoming 1-1-1. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, he's got all the tools that he needs right now to both scout alive and to react to what he's doing. Uh, we do see the reactor going down on that barracks, so it looks like there is no plans of an expansion in the immediate future for alive. It's just going to be one observer, or it's going to be two observers. This is going to be very crucial. Ooh, it's going to be just one observer now, Ben. So it's going to be very important that this observer is going to spot that Banshee. That is going to be key. And I really hope that the moment that Hawk is going to see this observer, that he uh, the Banshee, 
then turns around. Let's watch first person of Hawk right now. So we are following Hawk's camera. Hawk, oh. yeah, Hawk saw oh. the dreadnought. Hawk. But the observer is not coming back yet. But uh, this is it, really it quite the, bad. The, the, the red dot kind of blipped on yep. the mini map, Twice. and he did not look at it. This is bad. This is and real bad. Oh, hello there, Banshee. And immediately that observer turns around. Yeah, but it's going to take a really long time. And he's even producing a second Immortal before a second Observer. I think that's a terrible decision by Hawk. He doesn't know yet about Cloak. Now he does. He's going to cancel his Immortal. Wow, the damage that he's going to take here is just going to be absolutely catastrophic. Uh, already eight kills on the Banshee. Now she's going to pick off a Sentry. Ooh. And uh, the, the Observer does show up in time to chase the Banshee away. Eight kills, I mean, fast, man. I would have expected it to be worse with that observer no, being so kill, far out of position. Eight kills in a century, I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's yeah, pretty no, bad already. No doubt, man, no doubt. It's absolutely, uh, that Banshee paid for itself, paid for the research of Clo uh, Cloak, and not to mention the mining time that Hawk has lost, because that was a lot of lost mining time. And there is a second Banshee yep. now making its way into the natural. The army is terribly out of position. No, Where is Hawk's army? It's three stocks here, Oh, man. no, it's perfectly in position. <laughs> I didn't like, see it. I was like, like it's that? out of position. It's not on my screen. <laughs> Is uh, the first Banshee going to come back over into the main Hux base? Hawk's going to need a small warp in. Uh, Hawk's oh, still Hux not mining, by the way, job here. Of, the, of these two uh, probes. Obviously, he's quite be, uh, occupied dealing with these Banshees. Look at this Banshee, man. So much DPS. Uh, it's still really nicely done by Hawk. Yeah, no, no doubt. After that, after the start, he didn't lose anything anymore. That's perfect. Handled it very, very well. Of course, Alive is going straight up. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Old school, Puma style. Mm. Uh, salvages the bunker, and he's probably getting ready to move out soon. And one, one, one. the it's next question becomes, does Huck realize that he's being 1-1-1? One, one, one? He is still continuing to produce probes. <laughs> uh, Huck should know. Of course, it could be a command center. Uh, he's going to see it right now, Ben. He has the observer position. He's going to see the Marines. He's going to see the Banshees. And he's probably just going to go super, super heavy on the Zealots. He's immediately chrono boosting all of his gates, man, so he knows what time it is. Huck, you really need to build another pylon as well. Yeah, and uh, he does throw one down right away. Guys, have you ever wonder why you call it 111? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You build a barracks, you build a factory, and you build a starport. One barracks, one factory, one starport. That is your build order. Uh, later on, you will add additional production facilities, but that's where the name comes from. You know, in Walker 3 Band, Night Elf had a 111 as well. I did not know that. Ancient of War, Ancient of Wonders, and Ancient of Lore. Are those buildings or units? Yeah, uh, buildings. Mixed between standard, let's say, gateway units, some magic units, and uh, basically the Roach of. The Roach of Walker 3. The Wisp? But then it was immune from magic. It could slow units. It did damage over time. It moved very quick. It was basically an upgraded Roach. Man, it sounds like Warcraft 3 was just really hard on you, Kevin. We, you must have been playing the worst race. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> no, all the Undead players are screaming right now, No, you didn't, Rotty. No, guys, I didn't. <laughs> undead was the worst race in Warcraft 3. Mine was a close second. <laughs> <laughs> no, my race uh, orc was very good later on. Anyways, Ben, focusing on this game, four benches and three siege tanks. There is so much DPS in this army. Yes, it is, and uh, SCVs coming as well. Huck's Huck needs be zealots very, in very good position. Maybe a couple of sentries up at the top of that ramp, or maybe uh, he's just gonna come down and fight it on the low ground. The moment you start see, uh, start force building up, Ben, well, alive, alive. He's gonna take. He's gonna take the big turn. Change my mind, bro. <laughs> Want to expand? He's gonna wait for Stim. He's gonna. Wow. Oh wow! He missed that. Yeah. Oh, Cloak Banshee Ban. Hawk spots it. He knows his observer is a little bit out of position. What Where is are Alive the doing? He wants to wait for. He Stim. can't wait three minutes. There's no way. Then he's gonna. There'll be two Colossi out. At least one. Wow. Well, now all Huck has to do is get a get a Colossus, right? I mean, it's basically. Oh, Ben, the Immortals! To. Oh, all the oh, all the stalkers are in the main base. Look at these benches! Oh no! This is so Huck. sick. Poor Huck. Why one is Immortal. Why army out here anyway? Oh my! God. Second Immortal is going to fall as well. Wow! Three Immortals and the fourth Immortal Ben. Somewhere, somebody just said boom headshot, and it made sense. Wow! The sacrifice of all sacrifices. Oh, uh, and if you uh, take a look at the resources lost tab, you can see why Huck is a very angry little guy right now. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to call him little or not. <laughs> you went there. Wow. <laughs> Your words, Ben, not mine. Well, I mean, he's not a big guy. Oh, God. Huck just lost four immortals, Ben. He is going to get a Colossus out, but four immortals. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that's recoverable, Kev. He has a lot of zealots, but he doesn't have charge. 
Oh, Thanks, wow. Thanks, Huck, on a so sea job right now. Of course, the other side of this is Huck has to feel like he, um, he only made one mistake and uh, maybe feels like he's capable of outplaying alive. Like, he didn't really... He didn't really lose because his play was bad. He really he lost because he made he just had he just left his army out of position. He he's gonna try to make a final mistake. stand. He has so many zealots though, Ben, but uh, everything is quite clumped up. Zealots are doing a decent job, but there's only one immortal, so these siege things were actually well the benches. Oh, man. That's curtains for Huck. GG gets called oh. painful loss for Huck. Oh my wow. goodness. How often do you see that? No, very, very, very seldom. You know, Ben, the last time I've seen like an Immortal really so far out of position, it was actually very funny. It was one of the, main, might not be the last time, of course it happens every now and then, but I, I was still remembering watching the one of the very, very first StarCraft 2 tournaments ever, which was hosted by ESL. They just invited a bunch of former Warcraft 3 and Brood War pros two, three days into the beta. Uh, Dennis Tegain was shoutcasting it. And we had, Inso I think it was Insomnia, former Wax 3 player against Hazelops. And like obviously both players just being one base, one gas, low workers. And like Hazelops like, tried to make a, a small push with Zealous and Immortal. And then his uh, Immortal run all the way across Kula's Ravine and there was one Banshee. And the Banshee's like, poop. And then like the Immortal tried to run all the way back <laughs> to the other side of Kula's Ravine but didn't make it. That reminds me of one of the yeah. first games we ever casted here at the North American Star League. Uh, it was on Ohana. I don't remember who was playing. Dark Force versus a Protoss. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't Immortal? And then an Immortal was rallied across the map to the natural of the other guy. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and then he gets shot, and then you just see him like turn around and run away. <laughs> and you said something funny, like, I wanted to be a Colossus or something <laughs> silly. And I laughed. Yeah, I remember that. All right, guys. Uh, that's uh, game number two between Huck and Alive. Now ties up the series 1-1. One, one. That last one brought to you by Squarespace. Using Squarespace, you can build your own website. It's web development tools for you and for me. We're running a special promotion on that software. Available at nesl.tv slash p slash Squarespace. Please go check them out today. We're going to take a short break. Our final game of the day, Huck, alive. Who's going to take it? We'll find out in a minute. Don't go anywhere.